In this section we're going to go over PHP and object oriented programming. Now there are a few ways to program and one way is procedural which is usually what was used when PHP first came around and then we have OOP or object oriented programming which is it's just an idea of looking at things and certain things in programming as objects and objects have properties and they have methods so properties are kinda like characteristics and methods are action and methods do something they're basically functions that are attached to um, an object and every object has a class so I know those are some, they may be some new terms to you but hopefully in this section I can um, make you understand a little bit better how this all works so I'm going to go to my um, htdocs folder and I'm going to create a new folder called s7 and I want to create my index.php as we've been doing Oh, forgot the N. And I'm going to create a new folder. And I'm going to call that classes. Now we don't have to create this folder. We could just put the class file right in the in the root, but it's good practice to have all your classes together somewhere. Um, sometimes the folders called libs or libraries. Um, I'm just going to use classes and we're going to create a class and you want to name the file after the class in this case it's going to be car.php so I'm using cars as an object just because it, we can relate it to a real life thing it's a little easier to describe when you, you understand what the object is you know what a car is, what it does, what characteristics it has so I find it to be uh, a little easier to teach object oriented programming in this way. So we have our index file. I'm going to open that up with Notepad as well as my car.php file. So we want to go to our browser and we'll go to localhost slash s7. Alright, so now we're ready to go. The first thing I want to do is create the class. I want to uh, create a class and create some properties and some methods. So the way we declare a class or create it is we write the word class and then the name of it in this case is going to be car and the name of your class should be uppercase and then we just want some curly braces. Now everything that has to do with the car object or the car class goes in between these these curly braces. Now the first thing we can do is create some properties. So this should be pretty easy to understand. I'm going to create a property called make and I'll, I'll explain the public in a minute. I'm going to create a property called model and a property called color. Okay, so it's pretty easy to understand. Every car has a make, model, and color. All right. Um, what this public is, it's one of three access identifiers. And three available access identifiers in PHP 5 is public, private, and protected. Now, what public means is that you can access this make property anywhere at all, out of the class, in the class, anywhere. It's available to anybody anywhere. If we have it private, that means that nobody out of the class can access this particular property. You have to either go through a method that belongs to the class or you can only use it in the class directly. Protected means that you can't use it out of the class but you can use it in a class that's extended from another class. So if we create another class called Honda that extends the car class then we could still use this this particular property and good practice usually is to have all your properties private so and then create a public method to get to them and we're going to do that but I just want to 
Uh, I'm just going to keep them public at the moment. So I'm just going to keep this for now. It's just a class with three public properties. And I'm going to go back to my index file. And in order for us to even access the car class, we need to include the file. So we went over this in an earlier section. We're just going to say PHP include. And this is going to be, it's in the classes folder. And it is car.php. All right, so now we've included that that class and that file. Now to create an object, we can create as many car objects as we want. We just need to give it a variable and we need to we need to say it's a new car. So in order to do that, let's say variable car1. I'm going to say it equals new car and that that should have uh, some parentheses. And the parentheses are actually optional, uh, unless you have a constructor that's in your class and you need to give it some parameters, but I usually just keep it there. Um, so now we have, we actually have a car, a car object, which is held in this car1 variable. Now we can, we can assign properties to the car, either make, model, or color, from this file only because these are set to public. So let me show you how we would do that. So we can say car1 make. So this is this um, hyphen and greater than sign, uh, which looks like an arrow, is kind of, uh, it's saying that we want the make of the car1 object to be whatever we want. Let's just say Toyota. All right, so now we've given our car object the make of Toyota. So we can actually echo that out. Say car one, make, and if we reload, uh, let's see, we say class car not found, index PHP on line three. Um, okay. I'm sorry, we don't even have PHP tags. <laughs> All right, sorry about that, brain fought. All right, so if we reload this, now we have Toyota. Okay, and we can change this. Let's uh, change it again. Change it to Honda. It's gonna echo out Honda. So it changes the actual variable. Um, once we say that the car make is Honda, it's no longer Toyota, so we can't access this again after we redeclare it. So that's how you would use public properties. Um, the next thing I want to do is add in some methods. So let's add a method. We'll say public, and now we want to name it, and I'm just going to call it start. So this is a method to start the car. And you can also imagine this as if we're programming a video game because this is, um, this is similar to what we would do if we were actually creating a game, a uh, race car game or something like that. So our start method, all it's gonna do is it's gonna echo out car starting. Okay, that's all it's gonna do. So if we save that, and let's just get rid of this stuff and we'll say car1 start and that should actually have some parentheses so if we reload okay we're getting an error here unexpected start t-string um, let me see on line 7 oh, I'm sorry we need to write public function all right, so public function start. Now let's reload it. All right, so now our car is starting. It's calling this method from the index.php file. Now remember I said that usually you want to keep your properties private. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make these all private.
and I'll actually show you what happens if we try to access them. So let's say uh, car one make is Ford. So let's save that and reload. And you can see very blatantly it says we cannot access private property car make. All right, so what we need to do here is let's say we want to set the make to Ford. Well, what you need to do is create a method to do that. So we'll say public function set make. Okay, so this should have a parameter of what we want the make to be. And then all it's going to do is assign a make. So what we want to do is say this make. Now this is a is a keyword that you want to use whenever you're dealing with properties of the class. So if we're in a in, in a function, I'm sorry, if we're in a property um, f or a class function and we want to access a class property, we need to use this. So all this is going to do this set make function or method. When I say function method, uh, they use interchangeably. A method is pretty much just a function that's in a class. So we're going to say this make equals make, which is going to be what the user types in the parameter field. So we can save that and then we can go to our index file. And now we can say car one set make. And we can set the make. We can say, let's say Chevy. All right, so if we save this and reload, we're not going to get anything because all we've done is set the make to Chevy. Now what we need to do is create another method to get the make. So we'll say public function get make. And that's not going to take any parameters. And what this is going to do is it's going to return this make. All right. So now we set the make to Chevy. Now we can actually get the make. So we can echo out. I'm sorry, we want car one get make. Okay, so save that. And we get Chevy. So we set the make, then we get the make. Pretty easy to understand. So the next thing I want to talk about is constructors. And a constructor is, all it is, is a method or a function inside a class that is ran when you create the class. So, I mean, when you create an object. So here we created an object. We created a new car. Now, a constructor, we can have something happen when we, when we commit this line, when we parse this line. So let me get, get, get rid of these set and gets. And I'm going to create a constructor. So and the constructor should always be the first function or the first method. So we'll say public function. And it needs to have um, two underscores and then construct. All right, so that's how you, will, you can define a constructor. So in this case, let's just say echo car created. All right. So what's going to happen when we create a new object, a new car object, we're going to get car created printed out. So this document, this index page, that's exactly what we're doing. We're creating a new car object. So if we reload, we get car created. I don't know why that Chevy is still printing out. Uh, wow, that's weird. Am I missing something? Oh, all right, I didn't save it. So it we're getting this printed out just from instanti. This is actually called instantiating the class or instantiating the object. Now we can also add parameters to our constructor, and we can do that in a way where we can actually set these properties. Um, without having to use set and set and get functions or anything like that. So let's get rid of these set and get 
methods. And in our constructor, we're going to take up three parameters, which are going to be make, model, and color. All right, now if you remember, if we want to access these, we need to use this. We need to use the keyword this. So we're going to say this make is going to be equal to make. And this make is pertaining to this make. So what we're putting in through the constructor when we create the car is actually creating the properties. So next we'll do this model equals model and this color equals color. Oops. All right, so now let's save that. So all we need to do now is input those parameters when we create the or oh, instantiate the object. So we'll say Honda Accord Honda Accord and the color can be red. Well, all right, so let's save that. And we actually, it's good we got rid of the set make or the all the sets, but we should create a method to get properties. So let's say public function, let's say get color. So again, this is just going to return this color. All right, so now we've created a new car. It's a red Honda Accord. Now let's say we want to get the color. We can say echo car one get color. So if everything goes smoothly, this will be red. And it's not. It's undefined property get color. Uh, oh, we need our parentheses. So we get red because we defined the color as red when we created the new car. Now we can do the same exact thing. We can create another car object. It just has to have a different variable. So we'll say car two and we'll say this is a Honda Civic and it's blue. All right, so we can echo out car two color is blue. So we're still not going out the red, the car one color as well. So we have red, blue. So that's basically, that's the whole structure of object oriented programming, especially in PHP. We have a class which has properties and methods. And a method is basically just a function that's in a class. And we can have a constructor which runs when we create when we create the object of a class. So I think maybe that might be a, a little hard to understand. Um, but as we go in the next project, when we deal with databases, we'll be using um, object oriented programming a little more. So hopefully that will drill this into your head because once you get it, it's really easy. It's kind of scary when you first look at it, especially if you're not a programmer or if you're a procedural uh, type of programmer but it saves a lot of time and it, it gives you a lot of code that you can reuse you know um, so it's it's really in the long run it's much more it's better it's just better to program in this way so that's it next we'll be getting into PHP and MySQL databases